I'm foot doc Dana and I'm a podiatrist, which is a foot and ankle specialist and surgeon. And today I'm going to answer the most Googled questions about foot health. Let's go. So first question is why do my feet hurt in the morning? Of course, it could be a couple things, but by far the most common reason for foot pain in the morning is plantar fasciitis, which basically means inflammation in the fascia, which holds up the arch of your foot. And this pain is due to tightening of the plantar fascia overnight. Pain in the first few steps in the morning is called post static dyskinesia because the pain happens after you've been static aka off your feet for a while. The best things you can do for this type of pain to start off are stretching, icing, and make sure you're wearing good supportive shoes. If the pain continues, make sure to see a podiatrist. They might give you injections, custom orthotics, etc. I actually made a whole video about plantar fasciitis and you can see it here or here, wherever the link is. So question, why do my feet smell so bad? Here's the facts. There's more sweat glands in the soles of the feet than anywhere else in the body. And some people just produce more sweat than others. Some people can produce up to half a pint of sweat a day. That's a lot. Foot odor is caused by bacteria that naturally occurs on our skin, and some people have different flora than others. So some people just have stinkier feet than others. You can help prevent odor by good hygiene practices, changing your shoes and socks often, and consider using foot powders and antiperspirants to reduce the odor and moisture. So what causes ingrown toenails and how to treat them? Ingrown toenails are caused by a couple things. Genetics for one, also tight shoes, or if there's a trauma, like something drops on your toe and it makes the nail grow funny. If it's just a little bit ingrown, something you can do is Epsom salt soaks and make sure to cut the nail straight across rather than at an angle. But if you keep getting ingrowns, go see a doctor and they can do a small procedure to cut out the ingrowing portion of the nail and possibly make it never come back. This procedure works by putting a chemical on the base of the toenail only where the ingrowing part is so that the ingrown doesn't come back. How do I get rid of my toenail fungus? Well, the good thing about toenail fungus is it's mostly just a cosmetic problem. It's not going to get in your bloodstream, cause a massive infection, anything like that. It's just localized to the feet. For the most part, you treat it with antifungal medication. This can be either topical or oral. Oral is much more effective. The most common oral medication is called terbinafine, also known as Lamisil. It basically works by making holes in the cell membrane of the fungus, killing the fungus in its tracks. You take it for about three months and the liver needs to be monitored since the medication is processed through the liver. So naturally some people don't want to take the oral medication so other options are to do laser treatment and of course topical medication. There are some really expensive topical medication for fungus out there. A fun hack is that Vicks VapoRub. Just the regular Vicks VapoRub is one of the most effective topical medications for fungus. Cheap but effective. So consider saving your coin and just using a little bit of Vicks VapoRub on those toenails. How do I fix my bunions? Well, I can tell you how not to fix them. These little bunion correctors that keep going viral on TikTok seemingly every month. And let me tell you why these don't work. A bunion is not an overgrowth of bone and is not a problem with your big toe. Instead, it's really a problem with your first metatarsal. There's a misalignment with the metatarsal and it swings outward, causing the appearance of a bump on your foot. Things like the bunion correctors don't work because they're just straightening out the toe, but not actually correcting the source of the problem, the metatarsal. So the only real way to fix a bunion is with surgery. But if they're not painful, you don't need surgery. Surgery. Ways to treat it conservatively are wearing shoes with wide toe boxes and wearing toe spacers. Why do I have numbness or tingling in my feet? It definitely depends. On one hand, numbness or tingling in general can happen when you're compressing a nerve, and this is anywhere in the body. The classic example is someone that sits on the toilet too long and their legs are completely numb. That's because you're compressing the sciatic nerve. But chronic numbness and tingling can be a sign of peripheral neuropathy. I most commonly see this in people with diabetes. If you have unexplained numbness and tingling, consider talking to a doctor. How do I treat blisters on my feet? Well, the first step is to have shoes that fit well, because usually blisters form on areas of friction. And if your shoes don't fit perfect, there's lots of little inserts you can put in them to make them fit better. But if a blister's already formed, it's usually important to not pop it. Try covering it with blister pads or moleskin for protection. What causes calluses on the feet? So calluses are your foot's natural armor, or at least it tries to be. Whenever there's an area of too much pressure on the foot or there's some friction there, a callus will build up and it's your body's way of trying to protect itself. But sometimes it goes overboard and the calluses become so thick that they're even painful. For this, you just want to use a pumice stone every day in the shower and use callus creams that contain
contain things like urea and salicylic acid. I think I have a stress fracture on the foot. What should I do? First of all, stress fractures are common in what we call weekend warriors. So someone that does a athletic activity that their body isn't used to, for example, someone that usually just stays inside but then chooses to go walk a marathon, they might get a stress fracture in their foot. A lot of the times this diagnosis is made by a physical exam because the stress fracture won't show up on an x-ray right away. It does take a few weeks for it to show up. Consult your doctor, but if you have a stress fracture, you might have to rest for a few weeks. You might also be given one of these beauties. How to heal a broken toe. If it's not displaced, which means the edges of the bone fragment have not shifted too much, you can heal it with something called buddy taping. So if either your second, third, fourth, or fifth toe is broken, you just tape it to the toe next to it. So if your second toe is broken, tape it to your third toe. If your fifth toe is broken, tape it to your fourth toe, so on. This actually provides enough support for your toe to heal. How do I prevent my nails from turning yellow from nail polish? Back to the basics you want to make sure you use a good base nail coat. Also, it's best to take your polish off every two weeks and allow your toes just to breathe for a little bit. Also use this time to hydrate them with natural oil. Oftentimes, if it's just yellow on the top of the nail, it's not that serious and it can be taken off pretty easily. But if you notice your nail is getting thick and is really discolored, it might be fungus, so you might want to check it out. So can I put deodorant on my foot? I wouldn't actually suggest deodorant, but I do tell people that they can put anti perspirant on their foot. So people will think about putting deodorant on their foot maybe because it's really sweaty or smelly and putting on an antiperspirant would really help with that. Deodorant, not so much. So why are my feet cramping. It's not necessarily anything going wrong. I know my feet cramp all the time when I go swimming, but sometimes cramping in the feet or anywhere else can be a sign of electrolyte imbalance. Some doctors might recommend quinine, which is the active ingredient in tonic water, and it can help with cramps. Cramps can also be made better by massaging the affected area, staying hydrated, and strength training. Why do my feet itch? Usually with Itchy's feet, it is athlete's foot. So basically, this is a fungal infection of the skin and possibly the nails. It's called athlete's foot because it's common in athletes because they share communal spaces like showers, locker rooms, and it's a breeding ground for fungus because fungus loves wet, humid areas. So if your feet are really itchy and scaly, topical antifungal medication may help. Did any of these answers surprise you? Let me know in the comments down below. Please like and subscribe to support the channel, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!